Last week was a great one, in fact, for the stock market. As we can see, the majority of companies performing very well with the S&P itself up around 4%. We do have to be a little bit cautious though, as we can see investors do still have some fear in the market and it will be interesting to see where we move over the next few days. But our focus today is going to be on six undervalued dividend stocks that we believe are very good buys for your consideration. As always, we'll look at their historical performance, we'll touch upon their dividend safety, talk about dividend yield theory, run through some very important underlying metrics, get to our own intrinsic value, see what our margin of safety is, and also comment on what Wall Street forecasts for over the next 12 months. So the first one that we have today is Mondelez. Now this one, we actually have a strong buy from Wall Street, a buy from Seeking Alpha, and a fairly rare buy from Quant. Now it does trade in the midpoint of the 52 week range. It has a nice starting forward yield of 2.68% and currently trades at a forward valuation of around 20. Bear in mind for those that want to know in context, the S&P right now around 23. Over the last year, it has been down around 3%. Over the last 10 years though, we do see it up around 96%. Bear in mind, this doesn't include dividends reinvested, so it would be marginally higher. And we do note all-time highs sitting at just under the $80 mark last year. Now, as we said, each one, let's dive into their metrics. Mondelez, a 66 score in terms of safety. And we'd love to see this, an increase this month for the company at 11%, double digit, something we really want to see on this channel and for those that just want to understand the score was reaffirmed just last week and what it ultimately means is that a dividend cut is unlikely we're going to look at each one's recessionary metrics from the last recession 0709 now Mondelez unfortunately they maintained it whilst they didn't increase it they also didn't cut it they had negative 19 percent recession sales well below the S&P's negative 12 but they did outform negative 35 percent with the S&P clocking in negative 55. Now dividend growth love to see that double digit this month but we also see 11 percent on average over the last five years it does come down to around five percent over the last 20 and as always on this channel we want a minimum of four percent just to keep up in line with inflation. Now they have also been increasing those dividends for the last 10 years consecutively. And as always, dividend yield theory for those that are new to the channel tells us a company is undervalued when the current yield sits above the five year average. So we have our first undervaluation signal. In fact, we have a double undervaluation signal as the forward P of 20 does sit below the five year of 21. But we do note it does sit higher than the consumer staples, which sits at 18. But as always, we never look at these models in isolation and we will conclude when we come to their individual valuations. Now, free cash flow power, as always, we draw your attention to that. The earnings is susceptible to manipulation by management through accounting. I want to see below 60%. If you want to be industry specific, consumer staples below 70. Pretty much over the last 10 years, just one year it's been above that, so fairly consistent. 61% in 2023, thereabouts over the next 12 months. So it does look good. We should expect next August as well if things don't change dramatically for some nice double digit increases. We then move on to the free cash flow per share where we want consistent increases over the longer term. It's more than doubled from the 2014 position and over the next 12 months, it is anticipated to increase quite significantly. So a great sign as always, that is a very key metric that we do wanna see before executing on any company. Then the sales growth, three to 7%, you know, three to four is purely just a bare minimum to keep up in line with inflation. Very poor from 2014 to 2019. Since then, it has looked a lot stronger, but do bear in mind, this is just the last four years. Over the last 10, it has been fairly inconsistent. When we do zoom out then, the highs of 2014 at 34 billion, down to the lows of around 26, where it was fairly flat from 2016 to 2019. But since then, it has started to increase 36 in the more recent year. As always, one of the things we love to see on top of the double digit increases is when companies return excess cash to shareholders through those share buybacks, something that we do see from Mondelez, not very consistent. So again, something to bear in mind, but it is a bonus as we would say, ultimately they are giving you a larger portion of control over the company you've invested in. Moving on to another very important metric, the ROIC, return on invested capital, 10% or more or 12 for the industry, give us faith that management can effectively allocate their capital. Now it does look very strong and very consistent around the eight to 10%. Again, we do wanna see around 10, which we have 
seen in 2021. 12 in 2023 does look very good. And on a trailing 12-month basis going higher, it does look like it is moving in the right direction. But ultimately, if we can get some consistency at the 10% level, that would give us a lot of faith. Now, operating margin above 16%, it does straddle around that on a consistent year-on-year -year basis. But what I'd like to see here is the operating efficiency going from 12% in 2014 to 17 in 2023. As always, that is a very key indicator of a high-quality company, not just an increase to their top line, but the increases to their margins that we can see today for MDLZ. Free cash flow margin as well, above 7% for this industry, pretty much there every single year. The last few years as well in the low teens, is always a very nice bonus to see. So lots of good metrics in today's episode. And in fact, the net debt to EBITDA, another very important metric, EBITDA referring to the earnings before the interest tax depreciation amortization. Why this is important, because it correlates to both dividend safety and balance sheet strength, Below full for consumer staples, the numbers you see below are the number of years it would take the company to pay off all of their debt net of cash on hand. It has been pretty much decreasing from the highs of 2017, 2.33 this year, 2.22 over the next 12 months. So a very good sign alongside that free cash flow pal. Dividend does look secure and the balance sheet does look to be safe. So let's jump into the valuation model. As always, if you do enjoy the content, value is being provided. Smash that like button, hit that subscribe and bell button so you are continually notified as they drop. Now, how we got to the $81 in today's episode. Now, in the deeper dives, we run through every single one of these models, the inputs and the outputs. Today, we're getting straight to it. So it is the average of these three. Now, with essentially Wall Street and their forecasted price at $81, not too dissimilar from our price, that means there is around 16% upside. And in terms of our margin of safety, very important on this channel, we always start off with a 10% minimum and we execute on that if it meets our three golden criteria, wide moat, strong financial metrics and good forward looking data. Now, if you believe that is a buy up to $73, then we keep going till it's near the current trading price. Now look, at $69, you're getting a 15% MOS, not too far off where it's trading now. So you could argue 15% MOS for Mondelez with 16% upside. For those that do want to see a little bit more, well at 20%, it would be a buy around $65. And this is one that we have covered at that 20% level, where we did say this is a very good company to consider in the portfolio. As always though, do let us know your thoughts in the comments below as we move along today. We also want to let you know we have just released today our latest free weekly article so do check that out where we look at some super investors what they've just recently bought and sold you also get access to all of these other articles that you can read instantly and in fact with this newsletter we have released our 35 undervalued stocks for the consideration in this month and we also talk about those that are in our portfolio and that we are looking to buy we do drop this at the beginning of every single month so soon we will be releasing that for September so do check that out by clicking below the next one we're moving on to is alphabet that needs a little introduction with a double buy and a hold from Quan. Now it does trade in the midpoint of the 52 week range with a forward P of 21.4. In fact, the cheapest in terms of valuation in the MAG7 on a forward P basis with a yield of 0.49%. And we can see it is up around 27% over the last year, but just over the last month, it is down around 13%. Now in terms of dividend safety, we do get a score of 80. Now bear in mind, they've just started to pay a dividend. So we will get a more accurate reflection as the quarters go on. And when we take a look at the last recession, well, they had around 8% sales, well above the average. Remember, that was negative 12. Now, in terms of dividend yield theory, it is something we like to look at. But as they've just started to pay a dividend, not something we will focus on. Instead, we'll draw your attention to the forward P at around 20.8. This is below the five year of 23.5. So that is a very strong indication that this is severely undervalued. Although we do know the communication sector sits much low at 11.8. But as always, within this, there will be a lot of poor quality companies. And as we have done in many episodes, we've gone into detail as why this company does deserve its very high valuation in comparison. Then we draw your attention to the free cash flow payout. Now, below 60% is what we want, as we earlier said. Now, 12% over the next 12 months. This is a very good indication that for Alphabet, we should expect continued double digit growth and something we will want to see as investors with a very small yield. Now, in terms of the free cash flow per share, very nice increases over the longer term, around six times. And what's always important to see is that projected over the next 12 months, this upward trend is anticipated to continue. We then love this sales growth, a double digit every single year, bar 2023, yet that is a high single digit of 9%. And on a trailing 12 month basis, 
13% does look good. We should be expecting another very good year for Alphabet in the full year of 2024. And numerically speaking, we can see the massive growth, 66 billion to around 307. As we can see again on the trading 12 month, that is expected to continue. And as always, we do want to see, especially from companies that pay a very low yield, are the return of excess cash through those share buybacks. Now, for a period from 2014 to 2018, they were doing the opposite and issuing shares, so diluting your position. But since then, they have been doing share buybacks, something they expect to continue. And over the last 10 years, in fact, at least 1 billion of shares have been bought. So that is a good sign. And as we've seen in their latest investor presentation, this is one of the ways they are looking to do in terms of that capital allocation. Now, ROI see very very good well above the 10 percent consistently increasing over longer term and over the last three years in the high 20s on a trading 12 month 31 percent looking very good very attractive for potential investors we then look at the operating margin very strongly above 12 percent and consistently a little bit of growth as well over the last 10 years and in terms of the free cash flow margin well above five percent every single year Net debt to EBITDA as well, this is not going to get any better for any company as we can see, zero across the board, meaning it won't even take Alphabet one day to pay off all of their debt net of cash on hand. If you're a regular viewer, you'll understand how we got to the 188. Now we will talk you through that from the DCF model, but we just want to point out Wall Street very bullish. They have a price target of $205 where they see 24% upside. Now, given we've just used one model, we can talk through it today. It is a DCF model with the free cash flow year on year. Average growth rate at 24%. Now, we've gone for 10%, which we see as the lower end of the low, medium, and high. Now, bear in mind, the last year was just at 16%, the average at 24 So we already believe that the numbers we are putting in are very conservative. Now, with the discount rate at 8%, we get the present value of future free cash flows and terminal value. Add together with the cash, subtract total debt, get the equity value, divide by shares outstanding, and we get that 188 intrinsic value, which ultimately shows 14% upside. Now, no surprises if people do believe that is way too conservative. So for essentially transparency, we'll show you the 15% in the model goes to 264, giving us 60% upside. And for those that do believe it should be higher at 20%, 371, meaning the company should more than double over the near future. As always, though, very subjective, so you can grab a copy of this model by clicking on the pinned comment below and running through your own numbers. As we mentioned, though, we will use that 10%, but we do believe this is already fairly conservative. And when we do put in our 10% margin of safety, it is a buy up to $169. And we do believe that right now, this is a very good company to add to the portfolio, or at least one to seriously consider. Again, for those that are interested, at the 15% around 160 and at 20% around 150. So quick summary, 10% MOS with 24% upside. Do give us your thoughts about Alphabet below. We then move on to the oil and gas giant Chevron Corporation with a double buy and a hold from Quant. This one is trading right there towards its 52-week lows with a very attractive 4.43% yield, a forward P of 12.6. Now it is down over the last year, negative 7%. Over the last 10 years, up 15. But as always, it will depend at which point you did buy this company. As we can see, the right lows of COVID in 2020 at around $60, you would be up more than double if that was your buy price. Now, dividend safety, 90, very safe. Love to see that and also love to see a very high single digit increase in February of 7.9%. What a very safe dividend score means is that a dividend cut is highly unlikely. Bear in mind, this was reaffirmed just two days ago. Now, in terms of the last recession, how did they perform? Well, they increased the dividend. They had massively below average growth at negative 43%, but they significantly outperformed the S&P negative 34. What we love to see here, 8% this year, 6% on average over the last five, and over the last 20 at 7%. Why we like to see this? Well, for a very nice yield, it is growing significantly above inflation. And we can also see they're a dividend aristocrat with 25 years or more of consecutive increases. 36 to be exact, and they've been paying a dividend for the last 112 years without a reduction. Now, dividend yield theory, we have a double undervaluation signal, both on the yield as well as the forward P, as it does sit below the five-year rolling. But we also note it is below the energy sector as a whole, to actually force Chevron Corporation, that is a triple undervaluation signal. Now we get to the free cash flow power. Bear in mind, as we go through for this company, given the industry it is in is very cyclical, we will see a lot of ups and downs right across year-on-year -year movements. Below 40 is what we want to see. There are thereabouts over the last three years. Over the next 12 months at 47% is fairly positive. 
And in terms of the free cash flow payout, we can see the negatives of 2014 to 2016. Since then, it has been increasing, although very inconsistently. Over the next 12 months, we are expecting that to continue by at least 30%. Then we talk about that inconsistency and can see it directly in the graph. In fact, out of the last 10 years, six of them have been negative and is a lot easier to comprehend when we do look at it on a numerical perspective. 192 billion in 2014 to the lows of COVID of 94 billion and then up to 195 in the more recent year. Similar to other companies today, they've done share issuances. They've also bought shares back. 1.9 billion though over the last Last 10 years has come down to around 1.86 then we talk about the roic well over the last three years it has looked fairly strong again do bear in mind the inconsistency is due to the cyclicality and when we look at the operating margin as well if we just look at the short term around that 12 percent that we want to see is something that we do get 14 in the more recent year and in terms of the free cash flow margin actually from 2017 it has looked fairly decent around that five percent level and finally, we end with this company on the net debt to EBITDA below 1.5 for this industry, the oil producers. It's been pretty much that way for the majority of the last 10 years, 0.4 in 23, 0.43 over the next 12 months. So no surprises why we did see and reaffirmed just a few days ago that very safe score. Now, our intrinsic value of 180 isn't dissimilar from Wall Street's 181, where they see very nice 24% upside. So again, one to seriously consider. And when we put it into the margin of safety, we'll let 10% a buy at 162, 15% at 153, at 20%, pretty much around the current trading price of 146. So if you are buying this around the 144, 145 level, you are getting a 20% MOS for a company that does increase the dividend at a very attractive rate. The yield is very nice, around 4.5%, and we can see upside also looking attractive. We then move on to Target Corporation with a double buy and a hold from Quant. This one trades right there in the midpoint of the 52-week range with a yield of 3.11%, a forward P of 15.5%, over the last year, now it is up around 12%, over the last 10 years, outperformed the S&P up 136%, even though we have not seen it yet recover from its all-time highs around three years ago at $261. Now we get a safe dividend score of 80 with a very mediocre increase this year of 1.8%. We're going to see over the longer term, they have historically increased it at a very attractive rate. And the last recession, they actually increased the dividend. They had above average growth, negative 1%, S&P, remember, negative 12. And they underperformed the S&P in terms of return, negative 61. As we mentioned, very poor this year. And one of the reasons why we do believe that, not just below inflation, but look, over the last five and 20 years, we have seen some very attractive double digit growth. Also want to point out they are a dividend king. They've increased the dividend for more than 50 years. Now, when we talk about dividend yield theory for Target Corporation, we do get that double undervaluation signal, both on the forward P as well as the yield. So that is off to a good start. And when we do take a look significantly lower than consumer staples of 18. So another triple undervaluation signal. Now, free cash flow payout below 40% is what we want to see, pretty much there or thereabouts year on year. 53 and 24, 53 expected over the next 12 months. So that is a nice sign. We are hoping that the next year increase will be a lot better. And over the longer term, it has pretty much doubled into 2024, expected a marginal increase over the next 12 months. Then we talk about sales growth, where 3 to 4%, as we said, just keep up in line with inflation. Two years of negative growth, including 2024. But when we do zoom out, we can see here it has been increasing at least above that inflationary target. Because ultimately, if not, it does mean in real terms, top line is decreasing. And we do quite like the share buybacks that they do perform fairly consistently over the longer term. Remember, always a very nice bonus for investors. ROIC also 17 cents, so a lot higher for consumer retailers. They've hit that nearly every single year, bar 2023 and 2019. 17 in 2024 looks very good. Sometimes it is worth paying a little bit of a premium or a smaller margin of safety for those companies that do have consistency. Now in this sector, it is very tough with the operating margins. For example, when we have looked at the likes of Costco, we see something very similar. Ideally, we want 10%, but not something they have hit over the last 10 years. Free cash flow margin, a little bit more positive, straddling around that 6%, one or two percentage points lower year on year. Then we finally get to the net debt to EBITDA. Below three is what we get every single year. 1.75 there or thereabouts over the next 12 months. So again, balance sheet looks safe. And we did see above as well that the dividend also looks fairly secure. 
Now our intrinsic value of 183 is higher than Wall Street. They have 174 with upside of 21%. And when we do look at the MOS at 10%, a buy at 164. At 15%, a buy at 155. At 20%, around 146. So you could argue 20% MOS and 21% upside from Wall Street is one to consider if you do believe this is one, a high quality company, and two, fits into your portfolio over the longer term. We then move on to Merck & Co with a double buy signal and a hold from Quant. It is trading in the mid to low end of the 52 week range with a yield of 2.71% and a forward P sitting below 14. Now over the last year, it is up around 5%. Over the last 10 years, up around 101. And when we do look at the dividend safety score, 99, very safe. In fact, the highest score obtainable and an above inflationary increase just in November last year. Now, in terms of the last recession, well, they maintain the dividend, no increase, no cut, above average growth, but also a near SMP return. And one of the things we do quite like is that dividend growth above inflation, 9% over the last five years. And at a minimum, over the last 20, they have been increasing it at 4%. Something that's quite difficult if you do think about it. Not a lot of companies over the long term can consistently increase at that inflationary target. Now, 12 years of consecutive increases, but they have been paying a dividend for the last 53 without a reduction. When we look at dividend yield theory, we get a sign here of slight overvaluation slash reasonable valuation. And when we do look at the forward PE, we get a slight undervaluation slash reasonable undervaluation signal. Although we do note the healthcare as a sector does sit much, much higher. Now, in terms of free cash flow payout below 60%, pretty much what it does look to be over the longer term for the majority of the period, 81 in 2023, a little bit too high. Nice to note though, 37% over the next 12 months. So that is possibly a signal of increased growth to the dividend moving forwards. Free cash flow as well has been increasing over the longer term, a little bit inconsistently, but it is moving in the right direction. Massive growth anticipated just over that next year. Then we look at the sales growth where it is above 3 to 7% on average, although they have had three years of negative growth. 21 and 22, very, very good. 1%, so fairly poor in 2023, but on a trading 12-month basis, it does look like 2024 should be a good year, especially on the other metrics noted above as well. Numerically, then, we see around 50% growth from 42 billion in 2014 to 60.1, and again, we can see growth anticipated based on the trading 12-month. Although when we do look at these shares outstanding, it does look to be fairly mixed. Whilst we do see share buybacks over the longer term, from 2020, we do note a very small issuance of shares into 2023. So not that consistent and maybe one just to consider when you do look at their investor presentations to take a look at their capital allocation slide to see what they are thinking to do with their money moving forwards. ROIC though looking very good and increasing 26%, 21% in the last two years, 24 on a trading 12 month basis. And the margins also look very, very good. We're seeing operating efficiency as well as above the minimums and the free cash flows, no worries whatsoever, then right across both of them. Then we get to the net debt to EBITDA where it hasn't been below three, quite high in 2023, especially from the lows of 0.7 in 22, but nice to see that anticipating drop into 2024 down to 0.87. So no surprises why we do see that strong, very safe dividend score. Now our intrinsic value of 143, a dollar shy from Wall Street's 144, where they do see 27% upside. And when we look at the margin of safety, well, 10%, a buy at 129. Then we move to 15%, a buy at 121. And in today's episode, you are getting a 20% margin of safety for Merck & Co with some very attractive upside from Wall Street at 27%. As always, though, do give us your thoughts below. We then move on to Packard, which is in the construction industry, very similar to Caterpillar, although we do see a triple hold right across the board. This one is trading in the mid to lower end of the 52-week range with a very attractive yield of 4.62% and a forward P sitting just below 12. Over the last year, it is up around 16%. Over the last 10 years, up 183, significantly outperforming the S&P. And we can see here all-time highs, in fact, in 2024 of 120 $25. Now, another very safe score of 81 and a very nice increase to the dividend, 11% this year in May. And when we do look at the last recession, well, they did cut the dividend. They did have below average growth and they did marginally trail the S&P, negative 62%. When we look at dividend growth, very attractive, 11% this year, 7 over the last 5 on average, 9 over the last 20 as well. And when we look at the number of years, we do see here 3 years of consecutive increases. 
Now, when we take a look at dividend yield theory, we do get a sense here of reasonable slash slight overvaluation, as well as reasonable valuation on the forward P. However, when we do look at the industrial sector, it does it much, much lower with industrials at 18.9. Now, bear in mind, this industry is fairly cyclical, so we will see a lot of peaks and troughs. And in terms of the free cash flow payout, below 40% is what we want to see. We get that from the majority of the last 10 years, 19 in 2023, 15 over the next 12 months. So we should expect for PCAR some very nice continued increases to the dividend. We then get free cash flow increase, in fact, around five times over the last 10 years. Not consistent, so do factor that in. But over the next 12 months as well, we are expecting some massive growth to the overall free cash flows. Now, sales growth, whilst we do see two negative years, significantly high in the years where it is positive. In fact, just over the last three years, we are seeing in the mid 20s, which is a very good sign for a growth company, and in fact, nearly doubled their top line over the last 10 years. Now, in terms of share buyback, share issuance is very minimal movement across the board, so not too much to discuss with regards to that element. And then when we look at the ROIC, consistently around the 12% that we do want to see for these heavy equipment makers, 20% looking very good in 23, as well as the 18 on a trailing 12 month basis. We then move on to the operating margin where we want to see above 15%. We don't get that consistently, but we do see over longer term, it has been increasing, especially from the lows of 2020. Something to keep an eye on, but will look very good if they can continue to keep that upward trend. Free cash flow margin as well, very, very inconsistent. Last two years, though, do look positive. We then finally get to the net debt to EBITDA. We want below 2.5. In fact, one of the best in this industry in terms of the balance sheet won't even take Packard one day to pay off all of their debt net of cash on hand. Now, our valuation of 112 isn't too far off Wall Street's 114, where they see 20% upside. Now, in terms of MOS, we'll let 10% a buy $101 at 15% pretty much on the current price. And that could be attractive depending on whether or not this is one you do want in your portfolio or whether or not you actually believe Caterpillar may be the better choice. So in conclusion, 15% MOS, 20% upside. As always, though, do give us your thoughts below. If you enjoyed today's episode, smash that like button, hit that subscribe and bell button so you are continually notified of these videos as they drop. Don't forget to sign up to the free weekly newsletter. And as always, if you want to come and join us, do click below in the Patreon link where we do talk about our weekly buys and sells. As always, have a great day and we'll see you all on the next one.